dig it. I'm so excited about today's song. Man, it's just one of those classic ones that, you know... Oh, Steve's calling. Hold on. Hello? Hello? I don't know. Anyway, he's going to call any time, and we're going to get this one started. It's, oh, here he is again. Hello? Hello? <laughs> and we're going to get a classic look at this wonderful standard on Green Dolphin Street. Now, check out how you can get more videos like this one. Just navigate to Bruce Gregory Video On Demand. When you get to the site, you can browse videos in a wide variety of categories. Each video covers a different topic and has bonus content and supporting documentation. There's even a free trial option. Don't forget to use your promo code to get a discount off your first purchase. And the link for that promo code is in the description down below. Now, if you dig the video, throw it a like, hit the subscribe button, and don't forget to hit the bell notification because that's going to let you know every time I upload a new video. And of course, the channel releases new videos on every Tuesday and every Friday. So let's get started. Dolphin Street, of course, written by Bronislaw Kemper, who was a Polish immigrant, but also a songwriter in the United States, and he wrote fantastic tunes, and what a great tune this particular song is. Now, it's got some interesting harmony, and really interesting harmony for the time period it was written. Of course, normally played in the key of E-flat, that's where we're going to hold it today. It starts on an E-flat major 7 chord, and of course, one of the things that I love about this tune is it is a great songwriting strategy right to the E-flat minor. And of course, the part here that's unique about this particular tune is the modal qualities about it. Now, I know that's not really a common trait that people talk about, but really those major sevens chromatically walking down. F major seven, E major seven, and E-flat major seven. And it's a fantastic device because it all pedals on that E flat major bass note. And then a 2 5 back to 1. And then he just moves it parallel. And that's really the whole A section. It's not a complex harmony, but it's a really unique one. So it kind of sounds like this. And then he does a 2-5 back to 1. And that's really the entire A section. It's wonderful. On the B section, I use the Miles Davis changes, which is really a fantastic form of backcycling in a modified way. And of course, if you don't know much about backcycling, check out my video on There Will Never Be Another You, and that will really dig you into backcycling. Of course, the other video you could check out is Blues for Alice by Charlie Parker, and that's another one that really uses this harmonic device. But essentially what's happening here is... And then it's basically a 3-6-2-5. Back to 1. And that's a fantastic approach that Miles created. So altogether, it sounds like this. we're going to 
to take with this tune, of course, is solo guitar playing. And that's really how I played the melody. And that's one thing I really want to accent because this is a great tune. Now, it's a much more complex solo tune to play. And it's one that you really need to work on and practice because it can be challenging with that E flat pedal tone. But basically, it goes like this. <laughs> It's a really fantastic way. So let's walk it through the melody slowly to see what it sounds like. Basically, I'm starting this way. And then an E-flat major 7. And then I'm playing the next line. And trying to grab that E-flat, but now in a minor. And one of the complicating parts about that is that's the melody note. And that's the bass note. We want to keep that. So all together, that section is this way. And that might be difficult at first for you to grab because it has the descending line chromatically and that bass note that stays on E flat. But it's one that if you practice slowly and link it together, you can grab it really effectively. And then for the bridge, we're basically doing this. And then moving it up. And then 2 5 to home. So, all of that together in context is going to sound this way. Check it out. One of the hardest parts here is the turnaround, particularly with this chord melody. So let's give it a listen so we can get it in our ears and then I'll walk it through slowly. Awesome. So basically what I'm doing is this. And then playing an inversion. And then I get to that A minor 7 flat 5. And then the turnaround. So if I play it all together, it's going to sound this way. Now, I have to admit, that is not an easy one, even for me to play, but it is a great, great chord melody. And of course, it allows us to blow over this tune solo style. So, what are we talking about when it comes to solo strategies for this particular tune? Well, it's really not all that complex when it comes down to it. We're basically looking at E flat major to E flat minor. So, I'm thinking E flat major scale to E flat minor scale. And then I'm walking those major sevens chromatically down, thinking about each particular chord change. Now, that's one strategy that I really want to emphasize because this isn't one where we can really kind of group the changes. We kind of have to play over each one of those. At least that's the way that I approach it so that we really get the flavor of this particular tune. Check it out. <laughs> We got a couple of two fives. That's E flat major scale. And then, of course, we're basically playing a G flat major scale. 
And that sounds like this. Dig it. It's really not all that complex. And then on the bridge with the miles changes, what am I doing there? Well, I'm kind of thinking of C harmonic minor or F Dorian over the first part of the turnaround. And then the only part that I'm really deviating from E flat major scale or that C minor approach is when it gets to the A minor seven to D seven flat nine. I kind of have thinking of that chord change individually, almost like a G minor or G harmonic minor. So I'm basically playing C minor to G minor. That's the way I'm thinking of it anyway. Or we could think of it as C minor to C Dorian. That's another great approach. But really, that's the way I think about that turnaround. Let's give that a listen in the solo. Dolphin Street. What can I say? Man, I don't know about you, but I love this tune. When it's raining out or dark and damp, it's just one of the greatest tunes I love to play. Of course, it was written about a ship, Green Dolphin, so that might make sense why I like to play it when it's raining out. I don't know. But this tune is a fantastic one. Don't forget about the melody and the chord melody and practice that slow. And don't forget the modal components of it with the moving or chromatic major sevens. And of course, if you dig this video, make sure to check out my video on Blues for Alice and all the other videos on the BruceGregori.VHX TV site. The channel releases new videos on Tuesday and Friday. And don't forget to check out the new series on Wednesdays, Jazz Standards You Need to Know. And I will see you next time. Peace.